I have to talk about natural rights some more. Um, there, there are just way too many people who are running around believing that our rights come from the Constitution or our founding fathers gave us these rights. That's not true. Our fa founding fathers, the, the, the men who uh, wrote the Constitution and the De Declaration of Independence and, and fought against uh, England for uh, independence for their own, to set up their own government, um, they never presumed that rights come from government. Read the Declaration of Independence and you, you, you should understand this. It, it's made clear. When they say we are all in, endowed with certain unalienable rights, and among them are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, they, they're saying that we have these rights when we're born. They're appealing to natural rights as a justification for defying the crown of England. Okay, so really, when if, if before you run off and say the founding fathers gave us the right to, and then you run off this list of rights, think about that before you say it, because that if that's true, then the uh, the situation you're in is a really really bad situation. If if uh, you have to get your rights from other men then those other men also have the power to take away your rights. It means you don't really have, if it's true that, that men give you your rights, then you don't really have any rights to speak of. First off, those men are dead. Um, and the men who are in charge now, they don't really respect what those men have done. That should be obvious to everyone. Now, there's a... There's a lot of theories about natural rights and what they are, where they come from, how we learn about them. And I'm of the opinion personally that a lot of the uh, the philosophers of law, the uh, natural rights theorists of the past and the present too, they're not really interested in... Um, defining or describing natural rights as they really are their ultimate goal their telos the 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 the, the, the uh, end that they have in mind is really to build a foundation to justify legislation to prove that man can create law that's what they're trying to do um if you're really interested in knowing whether or not natural rights exist, you don't really need to be interested in an ontic source for them. You don't really need to be interested in explaining how they come about, where they come from, because in order to know something, in order to know whether or not something exists, you don't need to know where it came from. Now, if you can explain where it came from, that's great. That's wonderful. But it's it's secondary to knowing whether or not they they exist. It's it's been it's been posited recently. It's been it's, people have told me that what I should do is look to nature, and and that's how I'll uh, know whether or not natural rights exist and what what they are, what la natural law is, what what my duty is to my fellow man. Uh, for example, watch the birds. They they build a nest, and they don't need to go get permission to build a nest. They just build it. And therefore, we don't need to get permission to build a house. We just build it. And that's, um, that's fine. I guess it's useful to a certain extent. But um, the there are two problems I have with it. Uh, one is... How do I come about? How do I come to know that? How do I come to know that nature is what I should look to to know whether or not um, natural law exists? And so far, I haven't drawn a distinction between natural law and natural rights, but I'll I'll get into that. Um, I would have to reason to the to the notion that I should look to nature 
to to um, find natural law to discern what it is I should and should not do. Um, and I don't see how that's obvious. Honestly, it had to be pointed out to me. It never occurred to me. The man who who um, advocated it, the man who told me I should I should do that, uh, he he says that he he it came to him as an epiphany at some point in life, some point between uh, his his teenage years and adulthood. So it's not obvious that that should be the principle in the first place. And second of all, there are some things that animals do that um, that we should not do. Not that there aren't things that we do that we should not do, but if we're supposed to just look to nature, to the animal kingdom, to discern what it is we should and should not do, um, what which part of nature should we look at? Should we should we take in each individual species and and figure out how they treat one another, and that's how we should treat each other? Which ones? The certainly not the praying mantis. We we shouldn't look to the praying mantis to decide. How we should treat one another. So that's this is what let, let me just tell you the way I like to do it. First of all, we don't start where um, Aquinas started. We don't start by deciding well, what do we want to do? What is the purpose of the law? Let's define it, and um, and and once we know what law is for, then we'll be able to to decide what it should and should not do. We're just trying to know whether or not there is any such thing as natural law or anything that could be called natural law. And the there is something that's that's obvious to all of us. There are many things that are obvious to all of us. Among these things that are obvious to all of us are is the fact that it is wrong to um, torture people for fun, to cause somebody harm for no good reason to attack someone imagine you see a little old lady crossing the street if if the thought crosses your mind of running up and tackling her and leaving her in the street knocked over and tackled you understand you experience the fact that that is wrong and and this can be applied more subtly too say uh bill has something that you want if it occurs to you to lie to Bill in order to get him to give you the thing that you want, you experience the fact that that's wrong. Okay, and if you're if you're per, very, particularly young and stupid, perhaps it's not as obvious to you as it as it is to uh, to mature people of sound mind. But it, it does become obvious when anyone ever points it out. Now, um, Lysander Spooner goes into this in great depth in The Science of Justice. And I've given you a reading of The Science of Justice, but it's very long. And um, you can read it for yourself, but I, I know most people don't want to do that. You can listen to it. Feel free to listen to it. And, and he will make it very plain to everyone that you can't go through life, you can't even grow up without having learned natural law. Okay, This experience that you have, this intuitive perception of what is wrong, that's natural law. Okay, Now, the, the, the fact that natural law exists is proven by the fact that everyone, every single adult on the planet, perceives it. Everyone knows that it exists, whether they want to call it natural law or not. They all perceive, I don't know if you want to call it, it's been called a realm of moral oughtness, but it, more, more specifically and, and simply than that, it, it's just you perceive each situation. In each situation, you perceive what is uh, the wrong way to, to, to proceed. So, this is natural law. Where it comes from, you know, I have my suspicions. In fact, I have my beliefs. I believe it comes from God. But what, I don't care if you believe that or not. 
you can't deny that it exists. And again, you don't have to know where a thing comes from or of what it consists in order to know that it exists. There are all kinds of things. Imagine, imagine a couple of guys living uh, several thousand years ago, and one of them looks up and sees the sun, and he starts talking about the sun, and his friend says, what? what? What is this thing you're talking about? Where did it come from? Well, I don't, I don't know. Well, how can, how can you tell me it exists when you don't even know where it came from? Well, uh, it's right there, dude. Well, it, what's it made of? Oh, I don't know. Well, yeah. Come on, man. You're stupid. You're talking about this thing you think exists and you don't know where it came from or what it's made of. Uh, there it is. You know, this is the kind of situation we're in right now with natural law. It's right here. We all know it's there. And, and, and we've got the, the brightest, the best and brightest among us saying, yeah, well, um, you don't know where it came from or of what it consists, so you don't know that it exists. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so natural law exists. Natural rights. What are natural rights? Your uh, knowledge of natural law and uh, the cumulative knowledge of natural law that, that everyone shares, this is the natural rights of others. You perceive that it is wrong to treat others in a certain way. We have, uh, the, in the libertarian camp, we have what we call the non-aggression principle. We assert that it is wrong to initiate force against anyone else. And this is defined as any action that causes a change in the person or property of another person uh, that is unsolicited or undesired. And, and it's not even that important that it be undesired. But if it's a unilateral action on your part um, against the person or property of another that causes a change in their person or property and they didn't consent to your action, you have violated the non-aggression principle. You have initiated force against that person or that person's property. And how does something become someone's property? It, I, I, for now, I won't go into that one. We can uh, pick that one to death at some other point. But right now, I just want to make it very, very clear that your rights exist naturally. They don't come from government. I'll, I'll start over with that. The, the natural rights of everyone else are natural law for you. And not, this is not to suggest that natural law is different for everyone. It may be slightly different. It may be perceived in a slightly different way. But the core of it, we're all going to agree on. And if you start to try to defy the, uh, the, the principle of non-aggression and say, well, there are situations where um, you should initiate force against someone else, um, and so the non-aggression principle is, is wrong. No, there aren't any situations where you should initiate force against someone else because in any situation where you think you're going to show that one should initiate force against someone else, the other person has already initiated force. They're already in violation of the non-aggression principle. I promise you, I'm not going to go into a great many examples here right now, but that's the way it always works out. You just need to understand how uh, the non-aggression principle is defined and how uh, aggression is defined under the non-aggression principle. So we all perceive what we have an intuitive perception of is the natural rights of everyone else. We don't necessarily have a, an intuitive perception of our own natural rights. Well, no, that's not right, actually. We kind of do because we know that what we wouldn't like. We, But again, it's hard to distinguish what we would prefer from um, the uh, obligations of everyone else. Everyone else does have an obligation to not attack us or take our stuff or, or, or um, lie to us in an effort to get our stuff or, or anything like that. But we also might think, well, it would be nice if everybody gave us all their money. You know? So it's, it's, it's just um, our desires, our perception of what natural rights are, 
are not a good way to start because they could be confused with something that we just desire that other people don't have a, an obligation to provide. But uh, if we if we say that natural rights um, are derived from a natural law and the natural law for me is natural rights for you and you don't have to worry about me uh, not perceiving natural law because there isn't anyone who doesn't again except the psychopath who is mentally deficient um, and the natural my natural rights is natural law for you your intuitive perception of natural law con uh, constitute my natural rights you see so that's it that's where your uh, that's where your rights come from they come from us they come from you and me they're you're born with them when I say you're born with natural rights I'm not suggesting that you're born with an understanding and a knowledge of natural law it is something you learn as you go through life you learn it while you're interacting with other people but you're born into a world where everyone else in the world uh, does understand natural uh, law so remember their understanding of natural law which is pretty much the same for uh, across all of humanity is uh, your natural rights they all know see you're born you're a baby and everybody around you knows that it is wrong to go and hurt you they they all know that it's better to uh, uh, nurture you and care for you and they do for the most part they they do they do that they they bring you up and they make sure you don't die you couldn't live on your own when you're a baby you're you're brought up by your mother and and sometimes by those around her I guess sometimes by your father and they treat you the way natural law dictates that you be treated when you're a baby and then you learn this natural law as you grow older and you you follow it and your your adherence to it is uh, you abiding by or um, co uh, coercing to conceding to um, uh, the natural rights of uh, everyone else and remember now this is not to say that everyone is always going to um, obey the natural law it's not a physical law it can be it can be broken but everyone who is of sound mind every adult anyway who is of sound mind most children too though um, they know when they break it that they've broken it this uh, also doesn't mean that everyone has an intuitive perception of natural law remember there are some exceptions but also remember that these exceptions are mentally deficient they either have an IQ so low that they can't perceive it these are people who are considered to be retarded and they can't really do much else either so it's difficult to, for them to violate your natural rights and then there are another kind that they lack empathy they they can't feel any any sympathy for uh, other people they can't uh, relate to what other people might be going through these people are known as psychopaths they uh, are mentally deficient they don't perceive natural law because their brain is broken okay and those are, are going to be exceptions regardless of what we try to do to restrain them we have to we, we it's hard to know who is like that until they act on it or until we have some reason now we can examine their brain and determine whether or not they have the uh, propensity whether they're they they uh, are likely to act in this way and there's been uh, I, I saw a, a case recently of a guy who he was a uh, what was he doing he was a he was investigating um, situations of people who were uh, psych psychopathic and um, he was uh, uh, examining their brains he was trying to figure out why it is that the, the people who lack empathy do what they do and he there was a an episode where he uh, uh, there was an incident I'm sorry where he he was studying a, a bunch of MRIs and for some reason he had MRIs taken of the brains of his whole family including himself and one slide of a brain got mixed up in with the uh, for some reason with the uh, uh, those of the cases he was studying the psychopaths that he was studying anyway he finds out 
that that slide turned out to be his brain, and he suffered from the same. Um, his brain was defective in the same way that the brains of these psychopaths were defective. So he has the same capacity as them to to uh, to act in these these uh, empathy less ways. And uh, you can imagine it scared him to learn that he hadn't acted on it yet. He hadn't done anything horrible to anyone, but um, he had the same same lack of empathy, the same capacity for for uh, for acting that way. I'm not sure exactly why I brought that up. I, I guess just to sh just to touch on the issue of of uh, the fact that those who don't perceive natural law. Are, are mentally deficient.